Are you interested in learning more about this Espoma organic raised bed mix? If so, follow along as we fill out a scorecard and discuss the best uses for this soil. Now, Chris and I have already independently evaluated this Espoma soil, and so we're gonna compare notes a little bit and fill out a scorecard. Really, I wanna think about this as taking the journey as a consumer, and the first thing that I look at as a consumer is gonna be the price. And so to have a level playing field, we do this in terms of price per cubic foot of soil. And the Espoma came in right at $17.76 per cubic foot. Now, I will tell you, as I looked online, there was a lot of variability in the price of this in particular soil, but that's what we actually paid for it. So based on our chart, that scores this as a 6.5 on price. Right. So Chris, that next step as we get this bag of garden soil home, we're gonna open that soil and get hit with that smell. Yeah, I guess when I opened the bag and, and smelled this soil, it smells like wood chips, really woody, a little musty. Like musty, okay. Really musty um, is kind of what I smell. So you're getting musty, I'm getting a little more dusty. Like yeah, I, maybe that's... It definitely has like that forest floor smell. It's not off-putting at all. Off There's nothing bad about it. No. Uh, definitely dusty, musty, uh, definitely that wood smell. Probably falls at a seven for me. Yeah, uh, on the smell on this one, when I evaluated it independently, I gave it a nine. Again, this is super subjective, and the reason I gave it a nine is because it wasn't off-putting, didn't have a bad smell. I was at a seven, you were at a nine, so I think we can just fill that in for an eight. Okay. The next thing we wanna do is get this out and just see how it looks uh, and how it feels. One of the things I noticed about the look and feel of this one is um, they do recommend on the bag uh, to use gloves when handling it. And you'll notice there's a lot of relatively coarse uh, woody organic pieces in here. And I did get a sliver or two when I was filling this pot. So definitely would be wearing um, gloves with this. And so for that reason, look and feel in particular, I scored it down a little bit. And I don't prefer the look of that really woody um, appearance. Some people may. What was your take on this one? Yeah, just real stringy looking, um, definitely had the larger wood particles. You definitely feel like you're going to get slivers or you are getting <laughs> slivers when you, when you touch it. So definitely probably need gloves with this one. Well, you know, that's a little off putting to me mm -hmm. if I need gloves, you know, to dig in the garden, I feel like as far as like comparing it to a, you know, a natural soil. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, just overall, um, I, I actually rated this one a five. You were at a five. I was at a four um, for look and feel on this one, um, just because, again, I, I, I don't like to work with gloves in the garden if I don't have to. Um, so I was, at, I was at a four. Okay. Well, yeah, I think we bumped this one down to a four. Okay. Sounds good. So the next thing we want to do is look at the my soil test data, evaluate those nutrient levels, pH. We took a soil test <clears throat> the day of planting. Um, so Chris, do you want to talk about what you saw in those nutrient levels? Yeah, so on the nutrient side from the soil test, you know, the pH was all right. Most of our macronutrients were pretty good, teetering on, you know, the lower end of the optimal range for, you know, some big nutrients like calcium, magnesium, um, also low in nitrogen and most of the micros. I actually ranked this uh, as, a, as a four. As a four. And I kind of erred on the, the high side there based on that nutrient density score that was right at 65%. Um, so I had this one at a 6.5, but I agree. Um, there's a lot of potentially limiting factors here. Our nitrogen was only at 6.5 parts per million. Sulfur, calcium, magnesium, all barely in the optimal range and pretty low in most micros. So I could definitely come down. Can we meet at maybe five? Yeah. All right, so we're at five then for nutrient levels. I do wanna mention at this point though that this is a 100% organic based soil. So if that's important to your growing philosophy, um, this Espoma soil definitely has that going as well as the addition of mycorrhizal fungi, um, which can help those plants capture additional nutrients, especially as they grow and mature. So the next question is, will it grow? Um, so Chris, what are your observations here uh, with will it grow? Uh, I think it's pretty obvious on this one that it won't grow um, <laughs> as a st as a standalone based on you know our initial soil test results as as we as we mentioned I mean we really predicted maybe not this bad but that 
um, this would struggle without some type of a, uh, soil amendments uh, in this soil. So as you can see, um, they germinated. Um, we had the start of growth and that's where it pretty much ended in the soil. Yeah, and I, I do wanna just as a disclaimer, but this is one of those soils that we didn't use according to the instructions on the bag. We used it, like kind of put our consumer hat on and just filled the container and planted the plants. Um, Espoma does recommend adding um, for fertilizer or fertility and amendments to this soil at the time of planting or incorporating it into a native soil. And I actually think that's gonna be one of the, the best uses for it, but we'll get to that in a second. But certainly, as a standalone, um, it struggled to support even a couple of true leaves um, on these plants. Chris, what's your score for Will It Grow? I had to give it a one. I mean, it did germinate and that, that was about it. Yeah, I, I gave it a one um, as well. It grew a couple of leaves on the lettuce. Um, the fact that these plants hung on for six weeks was, was worth a score. Um, so I gave it a one um, as well. Okay. So I guess overall, as we consider price, smell, look and feel, nutrient levels, and then will it grow? Um, we tally those up and get an average or an overall rating right at 4.9. So a little bit below um, where maybe we see some others, but that doesn't mean there's not a best use to this. So Chris, if you got some of this Espoma organic raised bed mix, how would you put it to best use? Uh, honestly, I would use this probably for bulking up a garden, a raised bed, a, a planter. I would use it purely for, for biomass and bulking, adding organic matter you know, to the soil. Uh, just knowing that if I was using this straight, it would need to be amended for sure, you know, to grow to grow plants. Um, I wouldn't probably use it as a as a seed start, um, just the the coarseness of it and texture that we talked about. Mm -hmm. So those would be my uh, best uses for this soil. Yeah, and I, I completely agree. Um, I would use it for bulk and beds, for fill, for filling my raised beds, for adding to that coarse sandy soil to get some organic matter, hold some more water as a standalone. No. Difference than a spoven told us um, it would need amending. Um, you could also incorporate this into an already fertile native garden soil um, to help to help hold some uh, some moisture as well. So now we've talked about the best uses for this. If you've enjoyed this, please go ahead and hit that like button. You guys know what to do. Um, most importantly, hit that bell so you get notified when we do more product reviews. Let us know what else you'd like to see. Uh, for Chris and I, thanks for following along in the No to Grow series, and we'll see you again soon in the lab.